Hi everyone, welcome to Imaging Study. Today we are going to see a case of Michael Grover syndrome. A young female patient came with amenorrhea for more than six months. She was sent to us for excluding congenital anomalies after getting oligohydramnios at second trimester. Let's see what we have got on ultrasound. On the left image, you can see the femoral length measures around 40 mm, which corresponds to 23 plus weeks of gestation. On the right image, we tried to evaluate the head region, but due to suspected fetal head abnormality, we couldn't obtain a proper view to measure the biparietal diameter. There was also gross oligohydramnios, which was making problem to see the normal fetal parts. So we stopped at that point to evaluate the head. We jumped into other parts of the body to exclude other congenital anomalies. Hopefully, it will be a long scanning session. You can see bilateral enlarged ecogenic kidneys here at the fetal abdomen. These are grossly enlarged kidneys, almost compressing the abdominal structures. Here on linear transducer, you can see these enlarged kidneys. And with transvaginal transducer probe, you still can see these enlarged kidneys. These are ecogenic enlarged kidneys. If you do some histopathologic examination, you will see microcystic structures within it. And we had confusion about the horseshoe kidney, so we evaluate a little more further and you can see there is a differentiating ecogenic line of the capsule between two kidneys. And there is no bridging isthmus part entered to the aorta, so this excludes the suspicion of horseshoe kidney. You can see the ecogenic kidneys again. We also tried to evaluate the fetal heart and fortunately there was no detectable congenital anomaly at that part. Now we jump into the fetal spine. The spine looks quite normal at the lower part. But when we are tracing the cervical region, we see a focal splaying of the spine at the lower cervical part. Overlying skin looks quite intact. This area is the spina bifida. These are the forearm bones. Now when we are looking at the fetal head, you can see some irregularities over the facial region. So there might be something soft tissue abnormality at that part. We want to understand the anatomical structures first here. Here something soft tissue is noted which looks like some fingers. Here you can see the fetal lip, so we are at the mouth region. So let's jump into other parts. Here is the nose region, you can see this soft tissue area. This is the frontal bone, which looks quite intact, so it's not a case of anencephaly. Now here you can see at the parietal bone, there is a large defect. And this soft tissue area that you are seeing, like some fingers, are the brain matter. So this is a case of encephalocele. Here you can see the eyelids and this is the brain tissue outside the fetal head, making the fetal head small in size, that is the microcephaly. The placenta is posterior, so these are the brain matters. Here's the gap, you can see now quite well visualized at the parietal region. This is the brain matter. The finger like areas are the gyri.
The fluid-like area that you are seeing here is the umbilical cord. The fetus is having gross oligohydramnios because of renal dysfunction. Here you can see the facial region. Now let's again look at the cervical spina bifida. This is the transverse section. You can see the splaying of the spine. This is the normal spine and here you can see the splaying at the cervical region in cross and longitudinal sections. So again the facial region with encephalocele. What do you think? It's an easy case to detect in this type of oligohydramnios state. Again, the ecogenic and large kidneys. You can see the enlarged kidneys. So here's the picture. You can see the eyelid. This is the nasal region and upper part of the head. You can see the cranial vault is present but the brain matter is outside the cranium due to encephalocele, possibly from the parietal region. Here's the gap at the parietal region and you can see the encephalocele. Again another picture of encephalocele. Cranial vault is present. Here I have tried to locate the gap from where the brain matter is going out and these are the gyri which looks like some fingers. Here is the view of the abdomen. You can see the enlarged ecogenic kidneys indicating the renal dysplasia. If you compare the chest with the abdomen then the chest is quite smaller in size. These patients usually have the pulmonary hypoplasia. Here is a color Doppler image. Though the sensitivity was not very good, but the kidneys show poor perfusion. Here's again the enlarged kidneys. The image may not look satisfactory because not only of my machine, but also of the oligohydramnios. On the left side, you can see the spina bifida at the cervical region. You can see the splaying of the spines. Again, the spina bifida. This is the area of the cervical spine. Again, another picture of the cervical spine having spina bifida. Another picture. I am trying to show you some pictures because these pictures are not very good, I know. So, maybe one or two pictures would be helpful for you. Now, let's look at the transverse section. I know a lot of people can't understand the transverse section of spina bifida. If you are a person like me, Let's look at here. This is the vertebral body and this is the posterior arch. And just look at the posterior arch. This is the site for the spinous process. And here you can see on next image, the spine is splaying and this is the gap. The foramen is having communication to the posterior surface. But overlying skin is intact. So I hope this is a closed variety. Again here you can see there is a splaying of the spine. Another one, you can see there is a huge gap at the posterior aspect of the vertebral body. These are axial images. So, in summary, there was oligohydramnios. We have seen parietal encephalocele, which is also causing microcephaly. There was cervical spina bifida and bilateral enlarged ecogenic dysplastic kidneys. In combination of these features, we suspect it as a case of Michael Grover syndrome. We tried to exclude polydactyly in this case, but it was very difficult to exclude preaxial or postaxial polydactyly in this type of oligohydramnios case. Another take home message If you get any congenital anomaly, then try to search for more. If you see two or more anomalies, then try to establish it as a syndromic case. Now, what is the Michael Graver syndrome? I'll end it in two slides. 
Initially, it was described in 1822 by Johann Mikkel and uh, in 1934, George Grover also described fetuses with dysencephalia splanchnocystica. So the name came from these two persons. The mikkel gruber syndrome is composed of classic triads of findings. You'll get renal cystic dysplasia, you'll get encephalocele or other central nervous system abnormality, and post axial polydactyly. Among these three, the most difficult thing to detect is the post axial polydactyly, which usually we miss because of oligohydramnios state. So if you get at least two of these three classic features in a fetus, then you may suspect it as a case of mikkel gruber syndrome. We also may get a lot of abnormalities in this patient that I tried to include here. There might be renal cystic dysplasia or any other renal abnormality which may cause increased abdominal circumference. There might be renal agenesis also. Due to renal dysplasia, the bladder might be absent as like this patient we couldn't get any bladder and as a consequence you will get oligohydramnios in second trimester. The central nervous system usually shows you the occipital encephalocele though we have got parietal one here. There might be microcephaly, dandy walker malformation, corpus callosal agenesis, ventriculomegaly or holoprosencephaly. In case of extremities, we try to look for the postaxial polydactyly. You may also get preaxial one and club fit is also common. We try to exclude in this patient. There was no club fit here and limbs may be short or the long bones may have bowing. There might be facial abnormalities like cleft lip and palate, micrognathia, microphthalmia, air abnormalities and sloping of forehead. This will be very difficult to detect with ultrasound when you are having oligohydramnios. There might be septal defects on heart and coarctation of aorta. And due to renal dysplasia, there are some associations like hepatic fibrosis, pulmonary hyperplasia, and the baby may have cryptorchidism or ambiguous genitalia. So that's it. Thank you for watching this video. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for more. See you on the next one. Have a nice day.